or the solution to the um, voltage wave equation that we arrive at uh, through the uh, transmission line equations takes this form. Um, I mentioned that this term here represents um, forward traveling waves and this term here represents backward traveling waves. So we can define um, you know the ratio of these two quantities as like this and what this is called the uh, reflection coefficient. So if we have a um, a voltage signal uh, propagating through this transmission line in the form of a wave that, like we've seen. Um, there's going to be some degree of mismatch here between the load and the character characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Um, so when the signal reaches here, some of it is going to bounce back, and that's um, the backward propagating wave here. Um, so the ratio between the two is the reflection coefficient. So we can rewrite the solution, the solutions to the two uh, voltage and current wave equations uh, by including the term here for the reflection coefficient. And when we divide uh, this, the first equation by the second here, we end up with an expression for impedance. So this is the impedance. So this isn't the characteristic impedance. This is the actual um, the input impedance as a function of uh, position. Right? We have the dependencies here on our uh, spatial uh, position. Um, so, like I said, it's a it's a function of position. So, if we look at the impedance seen looking in right at the load where z equals zero, um, we can see that the terms, the exponential terms here all go to one, and we end up with this expression. We can manipulate this a little bit more, uh, multiply both sides by the denominator there, uh, distribute this guy through and, do, and distribute this guy through, rearrange a little bit, and we end up with this common equation for the reflection coefficient. So, like I said, the reflection coefficient is kind of, it's a measure between, it's, it's a measure of the um, mismatch between the load impedance and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So that's what this negative sign represents. So if there is um, no mismatch, so the load equals the the load impedance equals the characteristic impedance, then of course the reflection coefficient is going to equal zero. This just means that there's no reflection. That means that all of the energy goes into the load. And the load here in this example might be, um, you know, a model of, a, uh, of an antenna, for example. Um, so if all of the energy is going into the, to the antenna, obviously that means that the energy is being radiated, which is what we want. There's two kind of special cases. I know I get to it at some point. But if we assume that the load, let me just clear this up a little bit here. If load impedance equals the characteristic impedance, then no reflection. Um, if we assume that the load is shorted, okay? So if we short this guy, that means that, I mean, intuitively you can see that the incoming energy is is going is going to bounce back like you can imagine if you have a string you have a string in your hand it's attached to a wall and you kind of whip the string the wave is going to propagate down the string hit the wall and then it's going to come back it might be inverted or whatever but the the uh, the wave is going to come back at you and the same thing is true here um, you can kind of see how that manifests itself here in this equation for the um, for the reflection coefficient, if you set ZL equal to zero, then the reflection coefficient is going to equal to negative one. So this is a short. So this is a perfect match. This is a short. Um, if you let the load impedance go to infinity, right? So we um, assume that there's 
no load and that's just an open circuit, uh, you can see that the reflection coefficient is going to go to 1. So these are kind of the three extremes. When the magnitude of the reflection coefficient equals 1, uh, which uh, represents one of these two situations, that means that we have 100% reflection. When the um, refraction coefficient is zero, then essentially we have 100% um, insertion or zero zero percent reflection. So another uh, kind of common representation of uh, these concepts, um, or the you know the concept of the um, reflection coefficient, is something called the the voltage standing wave ratio. It's you know it's pretty much impossible to match a load um, to a transmission line. Like there's always going to be some degree of mismatch. Whenever there's some mismatch, some of the incident wave is reflected. There's ends up being a uh, a standing wave that forms on the transmission line. So that's what the the VSWR captures. Uh, we can see here that kind of best case, if the ref if the reflection coefficient is zero, then the VSWR equals one. So you can see here. Um, I guess this is a VSWR curve as a function of uh, the reflection coefficient. Um, best case, you know, it asymptotically approaches 1. And then um, you can see here that, like we said, that if the, um, if the magnitude of the reflection coefficient is 1, then that's kind of worst case. That means that 100% of the um, energy is being reflected. You can kind of see how it shows up here in the equation for VSWR. Um, I mean, we end up dividing by one, so ends up blowing up, and we can see that here. So the reason I included this red line is because oftentimes uh, you'll have situations where you have an antenna and um, you're trying to match um, the antenna to you know your system, to your transmitter or whatever, and you're trying to get it as good as possible. <clears throat> Usually the target is a, is a VSWR of, of about two. And the reason for that is because you can see that the slope of the VSWR curve really starts to uh, kind of shallow out um, around this range. Basically, there, there's a point of diminishing return here 